Hello everybody, welcome to Discussing Tabletop. It is of course uh, February 1st, 2019. Um, yeah, I know. We're on uh, episode uh, 137? Yeah. I had to check it. Acting hard, day. Eh? Yeah, I've been doing this a lot. Uh, don't mind me, I'm still sick but better, question mark. I'm at least, uh, feel like I function at this point in time. Uh, but we got a chunk of topics to talk about today that we want to discuss, uh, with each other, let you know about, and, uh, let the world know about. So why don't we start with the topics. We have, um, Unsanctioned. Uh, we know a lot more about it for Magic the Gathering. Uh, they have some card image galleries and stuff, and some of the stuff that's being the reprints and prints. Uh, there's a print version of Odyssey of the Dragons by Modiphius out. The Bright Sword RPG has a beta test rule set out. Um, Skirmisher Publishing released something for 4th edition D&D. Now, uh, the Kitsune race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw that and I'm just like, Why? Apparently some people still play it and enjoy it. I mean, like, again, for what it was, there were portions of it I did enjoy a lot. So I can see how there could be people that like it for what it does, for some of the things it does. Um, and then Vampire the Masquerade New Blood Starter Pack is out. Let's, of course, start with the top of the list, Unsanctioned. So... If you're not really unaware what Unsanctioned is, it's another one of the unsets, but this is like Undex. It's interesting. Yeah. They brought. I saw there was a couple like old cards that they brought back from other unsets. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah, it's got. It's only really got. It's five thirty card. Decks. Um, so I guess you can combine them into it. And only 16 of these cards that they're showing off are technically new. It's just you have to oh. notice which ones are not reprints and which are new. It's hard to. After three unsets, like some of these I recognize uh, from the first one, which is the only one I really remember a lot of, like Richard Garfield, PhD, is one from the original... Um, I mean, they've got the, uh, Scissor Lizard, Rock Lobster, and Paper Tiger. Rock Lobster! I'm pretty sure, like, uh, the half things were, uh, something old fogey I recognize. Um, there's a bunch of them that I do rec- oh, Timmy Power Gamer. <laughs> there's definitely a bunch, as I said, I recognize. Uh, I mean, I like the Sword of Dungeon and Dragons because uh, I looked up and they do have, like, what the tokens are for the set, too. And it, it, it's mm -hmm. it's the old, like, artwork, I think, of 3rd edition of a gold dragon. So you put a gold dragon token into play. And I find that hilarious. Nice. I don't know. It, there is a uh, a small child within me that's just like, that's funny. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> So, let the small child out. <laughs> no, they get to be locked away forever. So, I mean, it, it's interesting that they're definitely uh, taking their route again with, uh, you know, what they've been doing. Um, I do like uh, God. They have new cards. Uh, so full art cards and normal uh, art, art land cards. Um, I mean, other than that, the other cards that are like uh, could be described as like new or old. Uh, up to you to look through them, all of them. Um, uh, again, like I don't, I'm not as familiar with a lot of these to like be able to point out which ones are from the first three unsets, unfortunately. <laughs> no pun intended. 
No pun intended at all. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, I saw a few other ones. I think there was another one in blue that I thought stood out to me and was just like, oh, I definitely recommend recognize that. Yeah. Or Poltergeist. Yeah, Poltergeist, that's one that's recognizable. Uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, Chicken a la King. Mm-hmm. I like the Avatar of me. It, it, I would kick ass with that. Mm-hmm. Because Avatar of me is power equal to your height and feet, which would be six. Mm-hmm. And toughness is equal to your shoe size, which would be 16. Mm-hmm. Only thing is... What is it? Uh, rounds... Oh, yeah. Um, Amer uh, and Avatar Me is the color of your eyes, which would be depending on my mood because they shift, but possibly Hazel, which would be the first Hazel Magic card I've ever played with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's yeah. another one that was like, for every 10 years you lived, it costs one more mana. Oh, yeah, it is the Avatar of me. Uh, the spell costs one more to cast for each 10 years you have been alive. Mm hmm. So, unless you're under 10, you're paying extra. <laughs> yeah. Man, there's some very interesting things, definitely. I also like Bob of the Beeble, of, of Beebles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also the R&D card. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at me. I'm R&D. Yeah. <laughs> but the yeah. half-creatures, I think, are interesting. Oh, the half-creatures. Well, the half-creatures, I think they're all meant to be played with the goddamn squirrel. I well, think... also the hummingbird is. Um... Oh, the hummingbird is it too? I I forgot. Yeah, the hummingbird is a front end, so you could have like humming kitten. Mm hmm Yeah, I think there's there's not a lot of cards that really mix, which is I thought was odd. Well, again, like because we're talking about uh, five 150 cards. Yeah. You know that's not a huge selection of cards overall. Um, also, my three favorites, I think, so far, at least in black, mm. is in Sp Infernal Spawn of Evil, mm -hmm. Infernal Spawn of Infernal Spawn of Evil, mm -hmm. and Infernal Spawn... Uh, Infernus Spawning Spawnington the Third Esquire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just like... Okay, that's definitely interesting. But, yeah, I mean, I mean the uh, un decks are always... Silly. Oh, there's back, si too. Well, they're silly and interesting, yeah. Oh, Elvish Impersonator. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I see the squirrels at first half one, too. Half squirrel, half... They've got bat humming and squirrel are the ones. It looks like. Water balloon game? Yeah, there's some weird shit in here. And Underdome, the land. Mm hmm. It makes you play uh, uncards easier. Yeah. Which makes sense. Of course. Uh, no, there's definitely some very interesting uh, little stuff they've thrown together here. Um, and I would like a lit like it, getting a list of like all the new cards would be neat, but uh, I don't think it's necessary. Is let's see here, what's its release date? Is it out now or is it out very soon? I'm just surprised they don't have. A front end card for every color. Hmm. That is a very good question. 
Uh, front end card. Because red doesn't have one, okay. and neither does blue. Um, what do you, what do you mean by front end? The co combination cards. Oh, the or, combo cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They only seem to have the three front end cards. Right. I'm saying that's why I was like, you'd think they'd at least do one in each color. Yeah. Yeah. So it's February 28th, so it's the end of the month that it's actually coming out. Um, so it's going to be a little while. But at least they're coming out with like all the a lot of the information with it now. They're kind of releasing uh, the big set. So we might still see some further spoilers or something on it at some point. Yeah. I mean... But uncards un un are always fun, but you know, it's not something you play with very often. No. It sounds like for these, it's definitely just something special to play with, and they're meant to be sort of like a special thing anyway. Yeah. They're um, always meant to be like the special silly, hey, well, we come out with these every few years, here's some weird ideas... Yeah, and uh, it's basically supposed to be like you take two. You I I don't know how the thirty card decks are going to be divided, but you take two of them, shuffle them together, and that's your deck. And then you play against someone else who does something similar. So I guess it's it's right. supposed to have like a weird replayability to it. Um, I don't know if it would be like you could separate them out again, or it would be more like it's made for sort of like almost like a draft, except not a draft, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, if they give you at least a deck list with them, you'd be able to easily separate them out. Otherwise, you'd have to write down everything that was in each one to be able to separate them out. I'm sure that they'll eventually put a deck list out that if you wanted to separate them out after you've uh, done stuff with them, you could. They normally do stuff like that a lot. Yeah. So, so if they have that, then it would be somewhat easy to separate out. And try different combinations. Yep. So it's very neat. Um, yep. You can check out a lot of the stuff that's being shown off right now uh, under the unsanctioned image gallery so it's definitely something that will uh, be interesting when it comes out that's a that's a nice way of describing the insanity that are unsets <laughs> we're all insane here it's okay mm -hmm. so uh, let's talk about uh, a release by Modifius. So, Modifius uh, has, oh, that's not, I don't know what to grab from, uh, has rented print versions of the thing. So it's like, um, oh, just... Mm -hmm. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. Yeah, so Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. Um, they had just been PDFs, so their new releases are actual physical books. Which sounds like a weird thing to be like. They have released physical books. <laughs> yes. Um. Well, not everyone wants to use it digitally or print it out themselves. So it includes a hardcore adventure book, a player's guide, GM screen poster map. Uh, as they've got an Odyssey Dragon Lords collection uh, featuring all the major game releases and uh, with all purchases receiving free PDFs. And that's coming to the local game stores in February. Um... So Odyssey of the Dragon Lords is a adventure setting for 5th edition D&D. &D. Um, one of the lead designers on it did work on like Baldur's Gate, Dragon Age Oricons, Dice of the Old Republic. Uh, so did like video game stuff, but also had like a lot of that flair of uh, older D&Ds. That's cool. Mm -hmm. 
So it's kind of interesting that, like, most of the time we see, like, print and PDFs come out, or print come out, maybe not PDFs, and this is, like, one of the first time I definitely say, like, it's a weird reverse, almost. Yeah, and then it's been out in PDF form for a while, and it's like, oh, we're going to actually print some. Yeah. But like I said, not everyone wants to read off a PDF, and not everyone wants to spend the money to print out an entire PDF's worth of information either. Yeah, and not everybody needs a physical book, too. It's right. like, it's the both but directions. I, I, I do like the fact that they're giving the PDF with purchase of the hardcover, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, it is nice to see that, just so that it gives an option uh, yeah. with that one. Because, again, like, I think that's one of the things is sometimes it's better for the PDF, depending on your game, but sometimes you also want a physical book of something. And yeah. having that option is very good. Sometimes it's easier to flip through the book to reference something quickly, but if you're doing a, a stream game, you want everyone to have a PDF copy, too, to be able to actually reference the stuff themselves. Yep. Definitely. Now, granted, there's definitely some times where you'd be like, you, you kind of need both, and you don't get both, and that's kind of sad, but, uh, you know. Having the option for both is definitely a very good thing that they're giving here. Um, oh, agreed. I mean, I'm not sure if we've talked about a lot about Odyssey of the Dragonlords. I think we have before. I, it that's one it of the, doesn't stick out in my mind, but maybe we have. I think it's one of those ones that we just... It was a lot more in passing kind of things. I, we right. might have talked about it when it was up on, the, on Kickstarter. Um, True. True. So that's like one of those things. Um, I don't know. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know a lot about the game personally. It seems pretty new now that I'm looking for it. Like the Kickstarter project. Uh, right, but it's a fifth edition, so it's been out. Well, yeah, it's for fifth edition D&D, &D, yeah. Uh, oh, it's for 5th edition D&D. &D. Oh, okay. That makes more sense now. Okay, so it looks like... My brains. It, now that I'm looking into it, the Kickstarter for the original one was supposed to have an estimated delivery of July 2019. So that was when it originally uh, was made to go to. Gotcha. Tr trying to figure out where the original update was, where they talked about stuff. They did it last year. Okay. Yeah, so the campaign. So it might have been a year that. ago that we talked about it. Yes, that we might have mentioned it all as it being a Kickstarter, but again, like it's unfortunately not every RPG Kickstarter we've talked about. It's like one of those things. We yeah. I try to like hit up RPGs and stuff, but you can't always get all of them. Especially they tend to come out like around similar times, and it's like, oh, there's like ten of them. Which ones do we want to talk about? <laughs> yeah, what stands out? You know, how many how many of these Kickstarters seems like an interesting one to speak about this week that people might be interested in? Right, it's a hard thing, <laughs> but uh, it is out now. It was successful, and Modifius has picked it up. It looks like they've become the major publisher for it. Um, we'll see if they do more, or if this will. If this is just like the. Uh, uh, wide scale release of stuff that went to the Kickstarter people. Right. <clears throat> That's a good question. Whether which what it is, but yep, they've they've got a bundle of all their bunch of their stuff too. So, the hardcore adventure book, softcore player's guide, GM screen, the three posters are their um, bundle. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which the map looks really cool. It does. Yeah, the double sided the map of Theron. Kind of cool looking too. Oh yeah, no, they. It's an interesting. They they're very colorful. They have their own style to things, and it's very nice that they are doing that. Yeah. 
so. Uh, why don't we continue on? Because yes, I'm okay. still I still feel a plague, and uh, no plague for you. Hmm. So we, what's the company that has it? Uh, DGS um, Games, who make uh, Free Blades. They have an RPG rule set called Bright Sword, and they've done a lot a bit, but they're putting out a free beta version of Bright Sword out now. Um, yes. So. Uh, I did download it. Well, I'm doing that just now, too. Uh. I thought I did. I don't think it ever actually finished. Hmm. So I'm re-downloading it. <laughs> there it goes. Yep. Oh no, I did have it. So this is their last update from the beta from well, yesterday? <laughs> Pretty new. And the original created this. They've been working on the rules it looks like since 2014. Since November 20th, 2014 was this original beta was released. Um, I mean, it's what it sounds like. It's a beta of a game. Um, it's your options about how you want to use it. It's 178 pages. Um, they've got character creations, the abilities, the items, adventuring, encounters, movement, combat... Magic spell list bestiary. It's a very it's a fantasy game. It's a fantasy yeah. RPG. So I mean like it's gonna hit a lot of the tropes of a fantasy RPG. It's just that like as a game they've been developing, um they have their uh basic rules. Um they have a tiered dice system, so it's very um God, Earth Dawn. And they use 14 types of dice. D4s, D8s, D, uh, D6s, D8s, D10s, D12s, D14s, D16s, D18s, D20s, D22s, D24s, D26s, D28s, and D30s. So... You need a dice roller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just like um, Dungeon Crawl Classics. They have a step-down dice system for, like, penalties. Mm -hmm. So, like, you might be rolling a D16. <laughs> that does not exist. No. There are definitely some times where you need a dice roller with some of these games, and this is one of them, unless you want to... Nothing can go above a D30. Uh, there's usually target numbers. So yeah, like... Uh, definitely tiered dice systems are very interesting. So. And their attributes are strength, dex, agility, endurance... I don't know what SPR stands for. That and is a... knowledge. That is a very good question. Uh, spirit knowledge. Ah. Mm -hmm. Strength, dex, agility, endurance, spirit knowledge. And s some of the skills I was just like flipping through some of them. It's really interesting, like with D comparing it with D and D. Mm -hmm. A lot of the skills are like combined. They had them more spread out, like art is a skill. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed a few other ones, that were, like jump was a skill, which, you know, that would go under athletics normally. Yeah. So they, they, they had them very much, like, spread out and more skills. Well, it seems like a lot of times there is more use to a lot of these skills, too. Yeah. You know, they... I'm they, not saying it's a bad thing. Yeah. It, it's... Giving a lot of abilities to these skills a lot more than you'd have in your general things. Most of the time, like, the essence of why 5th edition it's very boiled down is, is it's like when something feels like it fits under it, you roll it. Right. It's, it's a very broad term. While this one, it's more like, oh, I can do this, this is what I can do. Now, the interesting point is, like, do you, how, how do they do skill points and stuff to get skills... Well, I'm not diving deep into the character. No, I'm just right saying. Now, I, I'm just saying, 
you know, because if it's still limited, you really have to specialize then. And they've got talents that you get, which I think are kind of feat-like, except they have, like, a cost. Um, I'm not going to go full into depths and all this yeah. kind of thing, but it's a lot of interesting uh, stuff that they have. <coughs> it's a system that, you know, it's on the list of, hey, it might be interesting to try list. Yeah, definitely. So, of course, this is still a beta. Now, granted, like, again, this is a free beta right now so if you wished to test it out yourself you very well could right and things are still going to change before the final mm -hmm. product probably which is definitely kind of like <sighs> we don't know how far they're going to look into it this might be a sign that they are thinking that they're ready to publish something or to put something out in a more published format right so I guess we're going to have to kind of, like, see what they say. Yeah, this could be, like, the final steps of the beta process of, hey, we're going to release this out, see what, you know, feedback we get, and maybe do some la last fine-tuning and then, you know, bring it out to actual publish. Because, like, it seems like this uh, DGS is more of, like, miniatures and dice company. Seems like, at least I'd say what, that's what they're known for. Right, so they might be branching out. Yeah, and this might be built to go with their dice and their miniatures. You know? Yeah. The thing is, so because. Hey, we already do these things. We can make more money if we actually have our own system and we can make specialized stuff for it. I mean, they already have the dice set that's the unusual dice set they already have uh 14 d14 d12 d18 d22 d24 d30 right. dice sets um that you can get for 20 dollars so you can already get like a dice set of the really unusual dice that their set uses then other than the normal dice that most people like use right that's what I'm saying. That may be also what pushed them to, hey, you know, we already have, you know, we already are making things like this. Why don't we build a system that will incorporate it? And yeah, step systems. Again, step systems have a popularity. I think like Earth Dawn did have a good popularity. I don't know how it is right now. Hard to say. And they have very interesting looking D fours. I have to say, I'm looking at one of their 12-piece uh, tiered dice sets, and their D4 is kind of like the pyramid, except it's a lot flatter on each side. It's like a little like larger, and it's got like, doesn't have points. So it's where the points have been shaved oh, yeah, off and numbers show up there. Yeah. That, that is interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's kind of like a round... Um, Almost a rounded D4 in a way. Kind, kind of neat. Kind of unique. So, and they have really nice looking miniatures. I'd have to say too. You know, they're they're very they're I. Are they pre-painted? They look like they would be. No, they're supplied unpainted and assembly required. Okay. Okay. They just show off how it could look. Damn them! And they're yeah. making things look better than anybody could ever do in their right mind. Ever lives. do? Yeah, it's like you know they obviously you know hire professional artists who, like the one the stalker who has, is in grass and each blade is like perfectly painted. Yeah, Screw that. you're not going to do that at home. No, God, no. Uh, or at least I don't have the capability of doing something like that at home. I I am bad at painting miniatures. I tried like a couple of times. No. It's neat that they're uh, branching out into something, and their RPG rules do look interesting. Uh, again, like, beyond Earth Dawn, I don't know of many step systems. So, good on them for throwing them their hat into that uh, group. That's definitely... Yeah, a... it's probably a smart decision to go with something that doesn't have as much competition in a category for starting something new like that. Yeah, a fantasy game is a fantasy game, but mechanics can stand it out. In, the, in, in a fantasy game market. You either have to go really crazy with a fantasy game market, 
explore mechanics, and they chose mechanics, and it seems to serve them well as something being yeah. very interesting. Yeah, and it works alongside of their other, you know, their main source of income at the moment. So yeah, their product line. Yeah. So yeah, it's cool. All right. Um. We, sh we should talk about something interesting that yeah interesting is the word for it I'm gonna use so skirmish publishing released yeah. a Kasune for fourth edition D D and it's one of those interesting things about like it, yes it's fourth edition that they're talking about no, yeah, it still does have a following. Just like, I would love to go back to a 3.5 game at some point. Mm -hmm. I loved that system. Yeah. Like, going back and doing a a, a, a game of 3.5 for the sake of doing a game of 3.5. And, like, as I said, like, I, I know you definitely were not a fan of 4th edition for Air... But there were parts of Fort Edition I really liked. And I could yeah. see that there was some potential in it for a good RPG system. It just was too... It didn't fit with D&D. Because it was way too different. Yeah. It didn't it, feel it, like... It wasn't a natural follow-up to 3.5. Yeah. First edition, second edition, third edition, and fifth edition all feel like they are an evolution of a system. Fourth edition went on left field. Yeah, they they tried to do a lot of changes and I I, I feel it didn't work for me at least. Well that's the thing. I know like, there's some people that liked it and hey if that's if you, you thought it was a great system and you like to play it, by all means. And again do what you like. I actually enjoyed the battle system for what it was. I do have to say that. The battle system was fun. For a miniatures game, in a way. It was like an RPG slash miniatures game combined, because you really couldn't play 4th edition without miniatures. It was very difficult, since everything yeah. was measured in squares. A lot of abilities you needed to manipulate the board for. When well, we were I, that. Okay, sorry. I was going to say, when we were playing through... The pre-made adventures. We used the board so much; it was so critical to know where things were and have like the map out where there was hazards and traps and uh, <coughs> and um, features of a room, which made a difference. And if you, if you think about it, at that time, their miniatures line was doing really well. Yes. So that might be why they went in that direction to try to kind of keep support on that. And it's like, well, people are playing with these a lot already. What if we really heavily incorporate them into the game? Because then they started with the miniatures line, which I never got into because they switched the rules of the miniatures game. They made it more like 4th edition. Yeah. Which kind of annoyed me at their miniatures line because their miniatures line was its own game too. Now I understand making more like 4th edition because you streamline both of them. Like the original miniatures game was a very simplified version of everything. It, it was like you could use the actual stats which they gave you or you could just use their miniature stats which were just a simplified game in and of itself based on 3rd edition. When they switched it over, they switched over that too, which is a kind of interesting fact that it was like it was a completely different edition then too, that it was not backwards compatible in any way. Right. That was also the problem too, is if they made it easily backwards compatible. Fourth edition is not very easily compatible with other editions. Right. I'm going to let you continue. I need to walk away for a moment. Okay. So, yeah, as I said, like, I liked portions of 4th edition. Um, I do have, I did have a character that I played in 4th edition for a pretty big um, campaign. I enjoyed a lot. Uh, there was some interesting character options. I liked developing the character, leveling up the character, and planning for it. 
they had some good things, uh, some online resources for building characters at the time that helped a lot to get a lot of really cool options. I was a Tiefling Warlock. Go Tieflings, go Warlocks. Chiron, who was, who was evil, but evil never came up. Because that was one of the things, is the adventures that they had didn't build in role-playing opportunities. A good written adventure, I think, leads to role-playing opportunities, and even some uh, AD&D, 3rd Edition, 5th Edition, Pathfinder, all of them, a lot of the adventures have good role-playing opportunities, and I think just the nature of the 5th Edition book didn't really add in a lot of those. Some but many didn't exist and it was for someone to build on their own and build within the story and depending on your level as a DM means how well you can build into a story that's even a pre-made story if you are not a very good DM you need to have some skill uh, you need to like rely on a book too much a lot if you're not a very good DM or not very um, like if you're new to it you rely on a book, a pre-made adventure many times if, if that's your crutch for your first adventure or for like an early adventure that you're doing. And depending on your skill level, how well you've developed that skill or if you have those skills that are necessary to improvise a lot of things, that makes a difference on how this entire thing comes up. And the unfortunate thing is the way that they, the adventure which we were right, which is the one that we would have eventually fought Orcus, at least two of the adventures, full adventures, relied heavily on DM skill for any kind of role playing. So we had very little. Now the interesting thing we were doing is we were switching out DMs, so there's an entire different story for that one. So there's a lot of reasons behind a lot of the things that made our adventures with 4th edition good or bad. Now, that's that story there. Now again, this is an interesting one because they have a ship shifter that's a Kasune. They had shifters, which were from Eberron, as like one of the core things you could play as in fourth edition. I remember because two people in our group were shifters. Um, River and Autumn. Because Joe was a halfling, I can't remember, or I think, I can't remember his name. There was Gretchen the Goliath, who's our one friend. <laughs> Elvin, like, Sword Sage, who was our original GM, who then became a player. And the person who controlled Dressing did the second adventure. The person that controlled River did the third adventure. And the third adventure was awful. That was the other thing, too, is it was, since it was a set of six books, when one of them was really bad hell <coughs> but um and they did it up to 30 levels that was the trick it was an up to 30 level system too that you did uh heroic epic paragon that was another thing that it, you know it was anyway it was a very different system but i mean it's interesting that they have this now and I was saying that, like, they, we are, they already had kind of a ship shifter with shifters, which we had two of in our team. Yeah. So, I don't know how the Kitsune is going to be very different, but maybe it is. And, of course, it's giving, like, character and race stuff that helps for all your characters. But because they're mentioning it's for heroic, epic, and paragon tiers, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's another thing. Fourth edition went up to 30th level instead of 20, really. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. They had <clears throat> epic levels built in to their system. Yeah. That was the thing. I miss epic levels. Well, like, epic levels in general were interesting for 2nd edition and 3rd and 3.5. They just had, like, AD&D had their own rules set for it. It was just oftentimes multi-classing to get up to there. It was multi-classing also to a degree in 3rd edition and 3.5 because 3rd edition had the epic level handbook which was the book that you're supposed to use for 3.5 too. And then 5th right. edition hasn't talked about it at all. They just say like, you give them something else at that level. 
there are things you can do to give rewards once they've reached level 20 if you want to keep going that are equivalent to levels it's just it becomes but you fuzzy. normally don't have campaigns anymore that really go that far no i would say they don't i mean we haven't done an epic level campaign since probably either 3.0 or 3.5 and that one was like one we the two i can think of was one we started an epic level campaign i think <coughs> mm -hmm. and the other one was a very long run game which we all eventually got godhood well that one was pathfinder and we weren't technically epic right oh yeah true we only got to 20th level right well well because yeah, well, we didn't really play past the point we got godhood and the thing is pathfinder released their own version oops uh, of epic that was the like the Paragon tiers, I think they were called. If I my brain is working right today. Yes, I think you're right. Which they were leveled up almost or mythic. They were mythic. And mythic was leveled up almost separately, but it was supposed to be working together to make you kind of like uh, you could either do it on its own after you've reached level twenty, or you could do it over the course of an adventure. And they have like they describe both of those situations. It could be like I become level 20 and then I start becoming mythic. Or it could be that like you're a mythic hero to begin with and maybe you're like a demigod. You know, so like that that was your birthright and you're leveling them up together so that you get to 10 and 20. I've had a few experiences with experiments with mythic. They're interesting. Um, I... It's a different take on the epic kind of direction. So there's definitely a lot to this entire thing of high-level gameplay. And I do think it was interesting for Forth to attempt to increase, include it in for at least 10 levels. Neat on them. Yeah. But... It's 30 levels then, you know? It's a different system you're looking at. Right. Like, D&D &D at its core has always been a 20-level system. Period. Regardless of Epic or not. And so 4th Edition is the outlier of the 30. But, you know, anyway, it's a... There was an outlier with a lot of things. There were good lessons about 4th Edition. There were bad lessons about 4th Edition. And D&D &D took most of the good lessons and ignored most of the bad lessons, I'd say. Yeah, when 5th edition came out, you can still see some of the 4th edition stuff they added in. Yeah, there was some... That did work. Yeah. Like, uh, leveling abilities, uh, abilities that could be used at certain points in time, but they changed it from, yeah. like, battle-wise to, I can use it once a short rest, or I can use it once a long rest. And the short rest idea, which I think evolved from that, which evolved from, like, their things like their second wins and stuff... Which, it yeah. feels a lot more D&D, &D and a lot more like, oh, I just kind of can relax myself for a little while and regain my abilities, rather than, like, some of the abilities in 3rd edition and stuff was like, oh, you can re regain it either after a battle, you can you regain it after, like, you rest for 10 minutes, rest for an hour. Now they streamline that, you know? They streamline yeah. a lot of these things together in a way that were ideas that were developed over all of these games and kind of put it together. But, anyway. Yeah, I still think... This one last thought. I just, I still think the leveling up of magic abilities was one of the smartest moves. Yes, because mm -hmm. it kept those low levels. It keeps those low level spells still relevant later in the game, and not just like, oh, and I guess I can use a first level spell here that's not going to really do anything. And basic attacks for everyone. Yeah. Now, granted, like the originally the way that the basic attacks were, they were just basic attacks, and they called them that. And you used, like, I could have, like, sure strike with a sword as a fighter, which was kind of like, well, eh, 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 I'm not just sorting someone, I'm sorting someone and something else. That was kind of weird. But, you know, like, the idea of that for magic users was great because magic users had to rely on, like, quarter staff so many times in those early editions. It's just like, clunk! I'm out of spells that are, like, easy to cast. Clunk! Yeah. Well, yeah, that and cantrips. Cantrips sucked. You got, like, so few of them, and they were not, like... Now they're infinite. Infinite yeah. cantrips was the best idea ever. 
Because then you always have a spell at hand, and since they also level up with you, they're still useful spells. Well, infinite cantrips was something that I think first really hit in Pathfinder, but then the cantrips still kind of sucked. Right. But then the leveling cantrips that makes it that, like, oh, my, my Eldritch Blast or my whatever that I have actually is useful as an attack and gets better at a certain point in time. Yeah. It's, it's usually like only like one level up, but then it's like I can El Eldritch Blasting twice is still useful even at twentieth level because it's still like boom boom up to like possible yeah. D two D twenty damage you know or something like that. But anyway, yeah, it's 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 good that they uh, learned a lot of good lessons in there. But. Agreed. So uh, let's on to vampire. Let's talk about some vampires, because you know what? Everyone loves talking about vampires. They're all the rage with the kids these days. Damn kids and their damn vampires. Damn sexy vampires. Are you going to hit them with a curmudgeon? Yes. It's what I do. Sorry. It's what I do. Oh, and, um, just to note that the Kitsune book is 99 cents, if, you, if you're really interested in it. Yeah, which at least it is cheap since it, you know it is refer reference material for a little bit of an older game. And, you know, and uh, skirmishers just you know they're trying to keep up their English brain uh, profits. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's a word that escaped me completely. <laughs> you having words that escape you never. It's all the drugs in the system. The drugs that keep me functioning. Function drugs. Drug addict. I mean, I needed so much Dayquil pumped into me. <coughs> anyway. So, Vampire the Masquerade, the new blood starter pack. It's a print-and-play PDF bundle that embraces, uh, you know, the 5th edition Vampire World of Darkness... It's got the idea of new players in mind. So that's the important thing about this. Uh, it is it is centric to new players in the way that it's built. Um, it's got a rule reference guide, uh, a story which teaches you the stuff on the new edition of the RPG, printable enemy and victim cards, seven player characters, and a relationship map, which is a very interesting idea. No, it's always good when they, I think, when they do starter sets kind of stuff for yes. any company. Now, granted, there is a mixed bag of, like, sometimes people have, like, quick start starter sets that are free, and Modifius even does that. But I feel like because this is partnered with White Wolf, and White Wolf is a subsidiary of Fra uh, Fraxis? Not Fraxis. Uh, Paradox. Right. Paradox. They've changed hands a few times, so it's hard to... The people that do Stellaris are the people that own White Wolf, I know. Right. <laughs> yeah, Paradox Interactive. They're the ones that own White Wolf currently. And they are a very big company. So, they they do, like, Stellaris, the video game. I enjoy that a lot. They, they do that. So, yes. Um, so, yeah, it's teaching you how to play 5th edition. Um does help for if you're like new to replaying it's five pounds which is seven dollars i think it's around like seven maybe some change uh 6.6 .6. okay so about seven yeah it's about 1.32 dollars per pound actually not too bad about seven bucks for it um granted this is a pdf print and play um so you are you're printing it out your own accord right so that that's the only thing i can say about it definitely um yeah so yeah you can either use the pdf or just print it out um and it it 
it's definitely got a very nice appearance to it. I mean, like, again, like, the 5th edition stuff looks very nice. Even though that yeah, I definitely... Yeah, the artwork like... is great. Oh, yeah, no. Even though definitely I do have complaints about the way they've taken their storyline a little bit. I think they've they've taken some extremes in certain ways. Uh, but that's just me. I think... You, know. you can't please everyone all the time. Well, it made sense that like they made they made the sense of like technology and and cameras are ubiquitous. That like they're like oh there are like secret government groups that like found out about it, but then they had like there was a like Inquisition, and now like they made it that like. The interconnectedness of the world of darkness is less interconnected, they made it feel like. And mm. I think that's the one thing I have to complain about. They took it to an extreme. Which is why, like, when I used stuff from that information in my uh, World of Darkness campaign, my, my vampire campaign, I used some of that stuff, but I toned it down. I was like, sure, there's problems going on. In a modern day... There, it's harder for them to do this kind of stuff, even on the clandestine, because it's such large scale that they would have to do it. Right. So there's a danger there, but it's not as much. You still have to worry about it. It's just like there were. It always made them feel like there was a good number of vampires, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Around the world. But anyway, yeah. well, for, it also felt like before you know they were the ones really pulling the strings in the back. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nope. It's a it's an intrinsic change in the way that they 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 do their their they do it a little bit in the mindset. I think that um, I don't like as much. There are other things I do like about the entire thing, but so like I could definitely go into an entire thing. Um, I'm not as 100% on the system and the character creation, so I have to go over that, too, but... Like, uh, there's... Uh, I think that's one of the things I would love to talk about is, some point in time, how I feel like how things have evolved and changed with 5th edition. So... Um, I, I have yet to experience it, so I can't say. I've just read into some stuff on it. I haven't had, like, again, I haven't had a full review of stuff. Um, I think before we go into our final stuff here, man, I, I don't have a good point to talk about some of the other stuff I encountered at PAX South, and I would like to talk about it with, you know, people. Because I did check out some video game stuff too, but we don't have a very good um, jumping I, off point for that. Yes, I don't. <laughs> yeah, my brain's a little fried today. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'm a little on the back end of medication, so I maybe one of these days I will have it at the back end of our show or something. You know, just as an add-in. Uh, a little special thing of like other things I saw there and the people that I talked to that it would be nice to give them shout outs and like you know talk about the kind of things that I saw. I think I will uh, leave it for this week just because again just a little bit sick still and maybe next week I'll be feeling a lot better. So yes, here's hoping. Oh yeah, here's hoping that the 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 plague is going away. It's just going away at its own pace. The levels of plague I have faced over the weeks. Anyway, let's do our regular segments. So, if you are unaware, after we talk about our topics of the week, we have a set of regular segments we discuss. Uh, normally we have a deeper discussion. We have some things that we should review at some point in time, and we haven't reviewed them because we haven't had yes. a good playtest time. Things have been awful. Maybe like an extra day, some one week, we have to like just sit down and like grab some people, even like on an unusual day, just to play things and test them out. I don't yeah, know. we have to figure that out at some point. Yes, and we'll have to come up with a list of those that we can 
do that. Just because, again, like, there were some people that have been nice enough to give us some games that we have to play test for them. Um, but, uh, Kickstarter Corner, did you have one for us this week, Joe? Uh, I have one to shout out that I thought was kind of interesting. Sure. Uh, it is Acme, Acme's, Ac, Acme's, A-K-M-E-I apostrophe S, Spellbook. Okay. Paste. There is the link in chat. So it's a 5e um, <clears throat> wizard spellbook with interesting spells like being able to summon anvils in the air onto your victims. Oh. <coughs> gotcha. Acme's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Acme's. It just spelled weird. I yeah. just got that myself when I said, oh, yeah. Acme's. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So, um... It just started recently, I think. Let me get back to the top. Um, well, no, it has 13 days to go. A goal of 500 is only at 40 right now. Oh, I see it's at 50. So, oh, maybe it updated since I've been on here. And it... mm. Yes, there's another backer now. <laughs> um... So, yeah, it's, uh, Kickstarter's lead researcher. Yeah, 5e based on common gags from classic cartoons. Um, they have a few different pledge levels. You have Hedge Maze. Uh, Hedge Maze. Hedge Mage. Uh, for $5, you may not have the fumble training, but you're really, uh, given the medical ways, you have no desire to be weighed down by materials. Okay, so it's just a $5 pledge, and you get the PDF. Mm. Uh, $10, you get PDF and a print copy, which, can you just print the PDF? No, no, I think, like, a printed copy. Oh. oh like, a print uh, copy? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I would, I would, since it didn't have the ed at the end, I'm like, print copy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, nope. 25, you get the PDF print copy and limited 3D printed token. <laughs> that was what was confusing me for, like, a couple of minutes of, like, the odyssey of the Dragon Lords. I was like, print copy? Does that mean you're, yeah. just, you're able to print it? I'm like, oh, God, no, that means printed. they printed it out. Yeah. Oh, my God. I would, see, I would put printed copy instead of print copy. Oh, yes. English, thank you. Um, and then 75, you get the PDF printed copy... Limited edition 3D printed token and an online D&D 5e one-shot game run by the author. Neat. So they still have 13 days to go. They have a lot of money to still make. They're only at 10% of their goal. Mm -hmm. So interesting if you want some cartoon-esque spells in your game. Yo. Yeah. You check this out. Yeah. Uh, for me, I got a quicker shout out and one that I wanted to go into a little bit more. The quicker shout out is just for Tome of Beasts 2 by Coldwell Press. Uh, more monsters. More monsters are always awesome. So I'll throw that link in the chat. They're they're funded with 20 days to go. They're funded by a lot. Uh, Coldwell Press usually does a really good job with their Kickstarters of getting to very high levels. So they've certainly got their um, levels up. They've got some more uh, extras that they've got listed. Um, so, yep. Cool. Toma Beasts they're, 2. They're always a good company to keep an eye out on. Yeah. Uh, um, and then the other one is the Age of Ambition Fantasy RPG. Uh, also funded but with a, uh, not as nearly by a, as huge a percentage, let me put it that way. Uh, they were only asking for 3,000, they're up to 8,000. Uh, 18 days to go. Um, it's it's an RPG set in that time period, like, it's the Renaissance kind of, like, kind of way. Um, you know, where you're getting, like, 
guns and militaries and stuff like that you know that's why it's like that like age of expansion getting into that kind of thing um it's so it's a lot different of the traditional fantasy it's like the evolving where there's like new technologies and stuff and changes and rapid flux of stuff um so it's kind of interesting uh it is a very fantasy world uh so they're they're looking at towards early modern era fantasy basically so again like okay. renaissance so fantasy world in its renaissance age you could almost say so it's kind of like an interesting take on a fantasy world um i think we have seen a little bit of that time period but not as much you know where it's like you know you're going into those like you know flintlock pistols you know printing uh expansionistic like traveling the world kind of thing so right. it, it's very interesting and, and then taking the fantasy take on it and how that would evolve everything so seems neat so yeah, sounds interesting yeah I thought that was an interesting looking one so <coughs> are we can no death death? for you oh no death sure. will come to me um so we did. we had grinding gears. We had grinding gears, because I was awful sick last Saturday. That's right. I had to remember how my horrible fugue state of death was. <laughs> we had grinding gears. You guys finish off very comically for one of our characters mm -hmm. right here. Um, explored a decent chunk of the dungeon on his own. Yes. So it sped us up very quickly, because the non-intelligence guy did all the freaking stuff that Puzzles. was intelligence space and just punched his way through it. Yeah, that that was very amusing. I, I would have loved to see how the group would have reacted to the one room where it kept warning you that something bad was going to happen and. As soon as you started turning a wheel, it's you know it reset everything, and then as soon as you let go of the wheel, it would start counting down again. Well, he broke and the wheel I... right away, so we couldn't do anything about it. So it was great. Yeah, which actually worked <coughs> because the puzzle, the whole puzzle was not to do anything, and actually, it uh, just throws confetti at you. <laughs> so it was kind of a red herring. He ended up figuring it out in an interesting way. Um, after that, you managed your way down to the doors and banners living quarters. Yeah. You now have your diary from the pre days. Dear diary, I am a <laughs> sexy, sexy robot man. <laughs> um, and you have found the doors. For better words, cryo chamber. Mm hmm. Which we didn't open. We were no, like. you guys debated. And we're like, well, should we open it now? It does mention he was gravely injured. What happens if we open it and he dies? Yeah, we should look into this more. Get some more information and then figure out, like, what we could do and then open it. So, uh, we ended with you guys deciding you're going to go back to town. Uh, you found out more about the other cryo chambers other than the mayors. Mm -hmm. That um, the that the rest of them contain like a lot of the hunter replacement for hunters and merchants, which tells you that they are also mechanically driven people. They robots. Yes. So you've decided that you're going to go try to talk to them and see if you can get any information. <coughs> So this should be interesting for the next session of yeah, trying to get information in town and what happens during this time. Yep. Um, I had Records of Evil. We didn't have Legacies of Cain because we couldn't move it. We looked into moving it around, but uh, uh, unfortunately Carpe had something that was going on uh, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, birthday related stuff with close family so he couldn't cancel it you know it, he thought it was going to be Wednesday that the celebration was going to be but it ended up on Tuesday basically um, 
but instead we did have Records of Evil. We did cut short a little bit because I wasn't feeling great that day. But we, the team faced a Banshee. They scared it away for a little while. And then when it came back, only one of them failed the Constitution save to drop. But it was the Druid who had wild shape into a bear. And according to what it says is like, the Banshee says it reduces the target to zero hit points. Wild shape is when you're reduced to zero hit points, you shift back. So basically, she failed her save and just turned back to normal. <laughs> it was great. You know, so it was like, well, you didn't die. And then she changed into a bear again and they fought the Banshee and, like, they managed to defeat it. Though they got the shit beat out of them again. <laughs> and they explored more of that place and have almost explored everything on the uh, underground. Find, found a number of interesting items that are going to be taken back with them. That Some of them which they know what they do, others not so much what they know what they do. Uh, some oh, of, yeah. Because they're, <laughs> yeah. you know... Well, I mean, they're evil cult artifacts they found. Let's put it that way. They are an evil just... cult, and they're finding artifacts from their old, uh, you know, like, old, like, magic items and unusual items from their cult. Speaking of unusual items, that's the one thing I, <laughs> I forgot to mention. You guys got a treasure trove of... Weird crap. Weird, interested in gnomish inventions. Of which there's about, like... 33% use out of them? No, no. Some ha All of them have use to a point. Some are just very situational. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, and we did have... Uh, we didn't have Pathfinder on Monday. Second edition. But uh, we no, basically... We, we got equipment and gave it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you figured out what your treasure was and divided it. Um... And then we did have uh, Children of Wrath, where yep. we kind of tr uh, ended from where you guys had gotten your drugs. Things didn't go and well. Leveled. And leveled. Uh, you finished up in town there in uh, Corridor, uh, got your boat, and headed to Bogarden, where you're going to be going to somewhere, and you're going to have to totally meet a dragon, probably. Whose <laughs> daughter are hired per or person who hired us he kind of kidnapped not kidnapped allowed her to follow her on his uh, adventures without the father's permission she was her own independent dragon uh -huh. she had her choice of where she wanted to go she, uh -huh. she decided to go along with this elven man who was very nice and seduces people's mothers. <laughs> Just because he's older than a lot of the humans and totally had some girlfriends back in the day. Again, as he said, just because he's had two different girlfriends probably like 50 years apart doesn't mean anything about him being a womanizer. He's very old. <laughs> he's like a very old elf, man. Yeah, I know, but... Two of the people we have to deal with right away are, one, he slept with the one's mother, and two, he kind of took a dragon's daughter. It happens. Yeah. And he totally would have had a relationship with her if it was the fact that they weren't sexually compatible. I mean, there was a time. <laughs> they had some... It, it, as you said, it ended up being more of a plutonic love. Because it had to be. Look, just because certain circumstances drive you into certain circumstances doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It just means we probably have to deal with a very angry um, old <coughs> dragon. He might not be angry. He could have forgotten about it like 200 years ago. Yeah, dragons, I don't know if they will forget about their daughter running off with someone. Dot, dot, dot. But it'll be interesting to see where that goes. 
Also, my character had made a pact with death. Mm-hmm. And now has some warlock abilities. Yeah, it's neat. And it's been promised that one day he can die. So. Uh. Anyway. So that was our exciting yes. adventures this week. Um... Last thing, consult the table. So if you have any questions out there, if you want to throw them into chat whenever you're here with us, uh, either live or if you can put them into the uh, comments of this video when it's up on YouTube, which it will be eventually, probably I'll start trying to upload things again next week. I haven't uploaded in like two months, so we're very behind. I know that for a fact. So, you know, it was my friend's death, then the holidays, then it was trying to get ready for a large trip, and then now it's been sick. So, that's been my excuse, and any time I have an excuse, I don't do something. So, I'll try to I'll try to kick myself into actually throwing them some stuff up on YouTube. And, and hopefully, them. depending on how people are tonight, if mm -hmm. we can actually get enough people, Sunday is my birthday, yay! Fart. Um... <laughs> We might be trying some Dungeon Crawl Classics. Yes. We'll have to see. Anyway. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, but also, like, if you want to throw it into uh, Twitter, adding us, direct messaging us, Discord, in the actual Discord channel, or messaging us directly. All great ways of reaching us with questions about pretty much anything. We're pretty good at answering. Uh, as long as it's vaguely related to the nerdy world and or tabletop. Yes. Mm -hmm. No weird questions. Anyway, thanks for joining us today, everybody. Thanks for joining me, Joe, as usual. Of course. Uh, we should be back next week. We're on schedule for it. Um, if you're looking for the schedule for this week... Uh, I know, Joe, you'll be joining us for Children of Wrath next Thursday. Yep. Tuesday should be back to a normal schedule for both the Records of Evil and... Uh, Not tomorrow, with the following Sunday, more grinding, grinding gears. gears. Yeah, Legacies of Cain should be back, too. So we should be back to a regularly, pretty regular schedule next week. Uh, if anything comes up, check the Discord, check Twitter, and I'll let people know. But anyway... Uh, have a great rest of your day have a great rest of your weekend and uh, if I do end up doing anything tomorrow I'll let people know on Discord and Twitter I'm up in the air just because you know, maybe I'll use it as a day to continue to recover maybe, who knows what I'll feel like but anyway, bye everyone yeah.